All right, so I got a great video today. I'm gonna to be going over greens and landscapes. I'm gonna talk about desaturating greens, warming greens, cooling greens, making them darker, making them lighter. I'm gonna mix some greens up to match greens in a painting of mine. Talk about atmospheric perspective with greens. It's gonna be a great, helpful video. And if you're just really green when it comes to using greens, you're gonna get a lot out of it. All right, first I'm just gonna be using the primaries to make some greens. Later on, I'm gonna add some other colors to my palette to show you how I you know, use those as shortcut colors to get the certain greens that I like. So I got ultramarine blue, uh, cadmium red, uh, cadmium yellow light, and titanium white. So let's just start off by making a green. So get some blue and yellow. We got a green. Now the problem with this green is that it's just too saturated. You're never gonna find a green that saturated, I mean, most of the time in landscapes, grass, trees, bushes, you know, things like that. So we need to desaturate. How do you desaturate a color? You use its complement, and its complement is what's opposite of it on the color wheel. So I have green right here, opposite red. That's what we're gonna add to neutralize it and not make it as vibrant. Now, if you don't know how to use the color wheel, you struggle with that, don't understand the primaries, I actually offer the color mixing video from my Foundations of Oil Painting course for free. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. If we just add a little bit of red to this, it's gonna knock it down and make it look more like a natural green you will see out in nature. You can see it right next to there. It's more realistic. Now you can take this very far. You can add more red, kind of bounce around with red and blue. Maybe I'm gonna add some white here so you can see a little better. But you can see how gray or brown I can make a green. You know, I can neutralize it quite a bit. And that's very important to be able to do that with greens uh, when it comes to landscapes. I get a lot of people asking me like, how do you darken or lighten a green? Well, let's start with our base green again. So I got a green pretty much straight out of the tube there. Add a little bit of red, and I'm just gonna make this like a base green that we might be using in a landscape. So I'll just put that right there. Now, how do we darken that? Well, the great thing about using just the primaries in white is that it's pretty obvious like when to use what color. If I had like 12 different colors here, it's like 12 different options. Like, where do I go? What do I do? Like here, like which ones of these do you think I'm gonna add to darken it? You know, blue, obviously, right? You know, it's definitely darkening the color. It's also cooling it down. Now, don't worry. In a minute, I'm gonna do warm and cool. You can see that is darker than our previous one, but I can also add some red. Kind of warms it back up a bit. It's still dark. Now let's kind of see how dark we can get this before it turns into like a purple. A little darker. So just, you know, bouncing back between that red and blue. Now we're getting really dark. All right, now how do you lighten it? Well, which one of these do you think you're gonna lighten it with? The yellow, right? Well, you can use the red too, but let's just start with the yellow. I'm just gonna lighten up this dark patch that we have. So just adding that yellow, you can see it's already lighter. I mean, that's even lighter than up there that we started with. Now you can add some red too and still get lighter. So now it's lighter and warmer. Big uh, mistake I see a lot of people make is that they'll go straight to white to lighten a green. Now you can use white, but if you just know that you're going to knock the vibrancy of the color back by doing that. So now we're getting even lighter. You add some more white, more yellow. and another very light green. So we got lightening the green, we got darkening the green. Now let's talk about warming and cooling. All right, so I got kind of like a base, normal, slightly desaturated green to start with. It's right there. It's like an average green, you might see in a landscape. Now to cool it down, again, this is what's great about using the primaries, that's uh, very obvious, like kind of which colors you're gonna to go to to do what you wanna do. So to cool these down, which one of these do you think we're gonna to add to cool it down? If you said blue, you are correct. 
So I can add some blue there, we add a little bit of white, just to make it easier for you to see on camera there. Much cooler of a green. Now you can still add red and cool it down. So add some blue and red. That's still you know, a little bit white. You know, this is still much cooler than this green right here. You can add even more blue and white. Look how cool that green gets. All right, now time to warm the green. Got this base green again right here. Warm it. You can add either one of these. I could add just yellow. It's gonna lighten it, but it's also gonna warm it up. That's warmer. Could add some red. Got red and yellow. Even warmer. Even more red than yellow. Now we're getting kind of close. We're getting kind of in the orange territory, but sometimes, you know, tree, a lot of times trees, uh, in the sunlight, like at uh, sunrise, sunset, <clears throat> they can get even probably warmer than that. So we know how to saturate a green. We know how to make it darker. We know how to make it lighter. We know how to cool it. We know how to warm it. And think of those things as the dials that you're going to be turning to match a green that you see. The process I like to do for matching any color is to isolate the color and then match it. So for greens, like I isolate the green and I match it. In order to match it, you need to know how to operate these dials that we just went over. All right, now let's talk about what happens with greens and landscapes in terms of atmospheric perspective. If you watch any of my videos, you've probably heard me talk about this a lot. Uh, and the idea with atmospheric perspective is as things get further away from you, certain colors drop out. First yellows drop out, then reds drop out, and you're left with blues. And you can see that's happening in this painting here. Like for example, this pine tree that's in the foreground, a lot warmer, a lot more yellows in here, opposed to the same type of pine tree way back here in the distance on the mountain, it's desaturated, it's cooler, less yellow, more reds, and a little more blues. So let's do that real quick. So if I was gonna match this pine tree in the foreground, I would start by just getting the green, start there, just yellow and blue. Now, what is the problem with this green? It's too saturated, we need to knock it back. All right, so now we're just saturating it. And I'm looking at that, I'm saying, all right, what, is, what do I need to add out of these three to get there? And it's some yellow, some red, I think I'm getting pretty close. Oh yeah, pretty much spot on. So this will be our pine tree in the foreground. Now these pine trees in the background, what am I gonna do to this to push it back? I'm gonna, am I gonna need to darken or lighten it? I'm gonna need to lighten it. So I'm actually gonna add a little bit of white now you're thinking, well, what, don't you know how to add yellow? Can't you lighten it with yellow? Yes, you can. But I know since it's going further back in the space, I'm gonna be losing yellow. So I'm actually going to replace that yellow with a little bit of red. So I've pushed the white to lighten it a little bit and the red. And it's like, is that right? No, it's still too warm. Let me push a little bit of blue. All right, now I can see that's getting a little too dark. Come back with some white. All right, I think I'm getting there. I'm seeing a little more red. A little more white. Ooh, very close. A little more white and a touch of red. So you can see the difference, how much more saturated, how much more yellow is in this in the front opposed to in the back. So this right here can actually show you the stages that a green might go through in a landscape as it gets further away. You know, a lot more yellows right here. And then the next level back, yellows are starting to fade away, a little more reds. And then those reds are starting to fade away here, going more towards blue. And then a lot more blue, a lot cooler, a lot lighter and desaturated right there. All right, now I've added a couple colors to my palette. I like to think of these as shortcut colors. I added some sap green, 
uh, lizard crimson, and some yellow ochre. Now I like to add the sap green because this a lot of times is just the base green that I start with. Back before when I would mix a blue and a yellow to start with a green, it was you know too saturated, but that's how I started with my green. This is pretty much what I start with uh, before uh, desaturating the green. So it's just my home base green. See, it's very saturated and just saves me the step of having to mix blue and yellow together. Now, I like having crimson on my palette because it allows me to uh, desaturate the green without making it so warm. A lot of times, I'll show you, just got some green and white here. And if I add some of the uh, cadmium red, definitely desaturates it, but it also warms it up pretty quickly. I got a much pretty warm desaturated green. Now I just got some green and white here again, but if I add the uh, crimson, it knocks it back, but it's definitely a cooler green. It allows me to be a little more subtle with the uh, warm and cool dial. It's a way to think of it. Now the yellow ochre, this is probably like my favorite shortcut, <clears throat> is for trees in the distance like we just did uh, in this painting here, if I just get some blue and yellow ochre, it's going to get you a nice olive color, which is great for trees in the distance. See right there? Can add some white to it. Because yellow has, I mean, the yellow ochre has a little bit of red in it already, and it's a little desaturated, so unlike using uh, blue and cadmium yellow. I don't have to take that extra step of, of desaturating it necessarily. There's another lighter example of it. A lot of times I'll put a little bit of crimson. And you can see how quickly I already am to a similar color of these trees back on the mountain. Back there. So that's that green right there. So as you can see, greens don't need to be that complicated. Again, I highly recommend starting with the primaries in white. It just makes the decision making a lot easier and more obvious in my opinion. So whenever you're painting a landscape and you're trying to match a green, just isolate that green and match it and match it using these dials of light and dark, saturated or desaturated, warm or cool. Just always be thinking of those. And it might take you longer at first to get it. You might not get to the greens as fast as I did in this video. That's fine. You might have to use a lot of paint and like keep pushing and pulling the color back and forth. That's completely fine. I promise the more you practice, the better you'll get and the faster you'll get at it. And once you really understand the primaries and get a hold of them, then you can start adding these other colors to your palette of shortcut colors. And you don't have to add these exact colors that I have. These are just personally what I like. I feel like every single professional landscape painter that I see has different colors on their palette. It's what works for you and like how your brain processes color. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully greens are a lot less intimidating now. If you like the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.